expected to be about two weeks to the very crossroads. Ah, uh, you guys. Make sure you can go and get attacked by a black dragon. Mm -hmm. Not, not true. There's no, there's no black dragon in this area. It is too green. If anything, you would find a white dragon or a green dragon, maybe a blue dragon. That's reassuring. If anything. Uh, on your first day of travels, you are traveling south out of Melt along the South Road. The South Road is... Uh, so as you, as you leave Melt, it is slightly... is well-traveled. Like, it is, is paved for a little bit, then it's cobblestone, then it becomes hardened, hard-packed dirt. You see farmsteads. You see little cottages. And you do note that it starts to get colder. Uh, as you move out of the city, as you move out of the volcanic hot spring activity area, it is more like winter here, for sure. Your first day, I will say, uh, out of Melt as you head south is relatively calm. It is a nice day. It is, it's a sunny day. It is that like faux spring you all knowing that it is not the end of winter yet, officially. <laughs> uh, this is, it is cold. It is a clear day, but it is, it's cold. It is that uh, lack of overcast to keep the heat down uh, or keep the warmth in. But it is, it is a beautiful blue sky. Sun's out as you leave the town of Melt. As you pass the farmsteads, slowly farmsteads give way to rolling hills. An occasional wood, a small wood, not like anything you have to skirt around. Sometimes the road goes through them, sometimes the road goes around them. You see copses of trees uh, as you pass by. Small animal activity, rabbits, deer, a multitude of different types of birds. But your first day goes uneventfully, out of melt. Uh, you make camp. How... Do each of you go about making camp? So one of you has actually like camped. <laughs> one of you has kind of just done their best to make it <laughs> around. And one of you literally has just been walking south <laughs> for a period of time. So um, do I have like a bedroll and stuff? You do indeed have a bedroll. All right, I'll set that up. I guess I'll see if I can get a fire going. Okay. Oh, I, I can um, take care of the fire. True. Can you? Uh, <laughs> I'm outside. I, I can't burn down a building. I'm happy setting up the fire. You're surrounded by woods. It's fine. It's not like surrounded by woods. This is um a moderate like it is a it's a mix of it, it depends on where you wish to camp. You could camp in in the shelter of some trees. You could camp out in the open. Camp, yeah, I think we should probably go to some some trees. Yeah. Okay. I let them know that I could take watch for the night if they needed. As I start to secure. Like, I could take watch for the night to make sure that we don't get attacked or anything. Do you not need to... You, what about rest? I'm sure I'll be fine. We we can split the watch. I do not want you being tired for our journey. Um, can I kind of I try to try to see like with Ronald. Obviously, I know what Ronald is, but is Ronald still trying to hide it from Elikal, or is it kind of more of like an open open thing? Like obviously, I mean, unless they've taken their hood off, I don't know. Right. Oh no, I don't want people to know, and I I try to make it clear to Alphonse that if he says anything, okay. So I, I do I, have a dagger. I, I say, oh, okay. Uh, what what if you take the first watch, and I will wake up and take the relieve you and take the second watch? But obviously, I don't necessarily have to, since you don't have to rest, and that way Ilikal thinks. <laughs> The watch is going to be relieved. That sounds like a plan. That is fine with me. I appreciate the offer. You take the first General, night. There are three watches. 
three, four hour watches. So um, a long rest, you need to rest eight hours. There, There's, we're still, it's darker longer than it's daytime still. We've not gotten to the spring equinox, vernal equinox, if you will. Um, so it, it is dark for at least 10. Normally you would make camp, uh, someone would take watch, for three to four hours, someone else would take watch for three to four hours. Someone else would watch three to four hours. Um, okay, so I stagger it like I'm um, I'm theoretically three. taking the first watch. Okay. Um, and then pilot or Ronald can go ahead, and then that way when Illacall wakes up, it can be kind of be like, okay, it checks out. But as far as Illacall is aware, I'm taking the first watch. Yeah. Yeah. So the person who takes the first watch stays up late. Person who takes the third watch wakes up early. The person who takes the second watch kind of has a rough night. <laughs> <laughs> um, but shall we eat dinner? Yep, absolutely. And I uh, I use burning hands to to start a little pile of sticks. <laughs> Wait, whoa, holy. That's it's, intense. it's fine. Right. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. I have this under control. <gasps> <laughs> You you assemble a fire. You assemble like what would be enough to start a fire. I mean, I also enjoy using a flamethrower to. Start <laughs> there it is. Would I fireball be safer? Thing. You don't have. Fireball. Yes. Yes. Okay, fireball I will use fireball safer. instead. I'll use fireball instead. Okay. In, instead of. Hey, it's our first night. I'm trying to make Instead a good impression. Instead of using a 15-foot cone of fire <laughs> scorching the earth around you, you instead decide something that might be a little more subtle, not even. Appropriate? Appropriate, potentially. Yeah. I'm not going to make a range of attack. It's right there. You gesture with your hands and you say a incantation fire a fiery ball appears in your hands and you it's about the size of a tennis ball and you you flick it down onto the kindling and it immediately catches fire it is still a little overpowered uh, <laughs> the kindling takes 1d10 fire damage and that is enough <laughs> that is enough <laughs> to start the fire. The kindling is dead. And burning. All right, so now you have a warm fire. Yeah, I'll sit down, eat one of my rations. Yeah, me okay. too. Me too. And as you are eating, you um, you also uh, take care of all your other daily needs. You'll call. You are a trained mercenary and hired hand. You do all of your maintenance on your weapons. You take care of your hand axes. You take care of your. You have joblins also, I do believe. Mm -hmm. And you, big you old check sword. Them, you check you check those, and then last but not least, you set your sword in your lap. And as a daily ritual, you clean and you oil, and you sharpen as necessary to remove any impurities along the edge of your blade, should it be needed. Um, you slowly put it back in its sheath. You set it down. And it is it is bedtime. Uh, what is what is Pilot doing? For Arnold? I am shit. I am <laughs> okay. I am sitting on the edge of the campfire's light breach. R Ronald, you must be hungry. Here, I I can give you one of my rations. And I reach into my bag. I take it. <laughs> um, and I just, I just look at them. <laughs> I hide further into the dark. <laughs> <laughs> and I... Um, and you said there was like dried food in there? Yeah, it is. Um, it's like a little, it's a little bundle. A little bit of lamus bread. Lamus bread? How do you say that? Lamus, lamus. The yeah. Lamus bread. 
Oh uh, no, it's a uh, it's like a biscuit. There's some like raisins, craisins, dried fruit. Um, I dried meat, jerky. Take broccoli. the lambis bread and crack it in half so it sounds like I'm eating it. Yep, it's a biscuit. We we probably <laughs> want to retcon and make sure it's not lambis bread because one small bite is enough to fill fill the stomach of a grown man. It's just a ration. <laughs> it is. It is just a ration. It's a biscuit. Some sort. Or I take the biscuit. In I case we got a sweet it. deal. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like I'm eating it. Already. R.I.P. Crunch. Ration. Crunch. Crunch. I can't believe and you I... just let me sacrifice that. What, you wanted me to say something? I'm not going to say something. <laughs> not you. Not you, Kay. <laughs> and Crunch. then I take the rest of it. I haven't eaten it, and I want to later when Illicol is asleep to put it in Kate or put it in Alphonse's stash. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's cool. Um, yeah, munch, 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 crunch, crunch, crunch. Bread noises. You recall? Uh. Oh, geez. Make a slide of hand check to to do that. Mm. Natural twenty. That's pretty good. Ill call. Damn. Check. <laughs> Not as good as a net twenty. A Ronald munching on some bread. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> good enough for me. The bluff work. Yeah, and it is. It is about time. Uh, it is a clear night. Uh, you look up. It is uh, tonight. Is it a clear night? Can we see the stars? It is. You can um, see the stars, and tonight is the smallest moon is out. Only her, only Minuet uh, is the only. Actually, uh, Pilot and Illicol know the name of the moons. Minuet is out tonight. How many moons are? I imagine uh, I'm I'm watching the skies a lot. I feel like I should know how many moons there are by now. Um, you have noticed that there are three moons. Uh, and there are no, like, uh, there's no, like, cycle of them, uh, like our, our lunar cycle is. Uh, it is, they're either in the sky or they are not. Interesting. Okay. And they appear to, uh, cycle in eight, there are eight cycles in which they're in the sky or not. You did not, you do not know the names of them, though. No, no, I definitely You've not. You've noticed there is a... A smaller of the three, um, a larger of the three, and uh, the mid-sized one. One is white, one is blue, and one is slightly tinted orange. I've also cool. noticed that none of my favorite constellations are in the sky, and all the the stars are different. But that's that's what just a nerd. that's on me. Different. Favorite um, constellation? You don't have a favorite constellation? <laughs> that's on you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but that is uh, so. Okay, we have three. We have three watches tonight. Two taken by Ronald. I believe we're we're trying to bluff Illicol. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Illicol, you, you. Based on what you have said, you go to sleep. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Uh, you snore slightly. Yes. It is not not like overwhelming. Uh, but a little bit of snoring. Uh, Alphonse and Ronald, <laughs> pilot, you notice. It calls like, all right, you guys said you're taking the first watch. Nice, I'm out. <laughs> Lays down in their extra large bedroll. Nice. L appears incredibly comfortable and asleep within minutes. God, I wish that was me. Um, I don't think I have a bedroll. You have acquired a bedroll. Perfect. Sitting in my bedroll. <laughs> It is part of your adventurers or dungeoneering pack, whatever you started with. Nope. I started with the scholar's pack. Does the scholar's pack not have a bedroll? It, it, it has some, some ink and some quills and some pieces of paper and a bag of sand. <laughs> Don't think there's a bedroll. Yeah, like where, where, where would he have gotten a bedroll from? Maybe I bought one somewhere. Yeah. Acquired along the way. You have a backpack. Right? Right. 
And the and the what? The scholars? Yeah, I started with the scholars pack instead of the adventurers pack. What is your background? Uh, it is a noble. Yeah, I've got a backpack, book of lore, ink, ink pen, parchment, little bag of sand, and a small knife in my pack. Very ill prepared. So I think I'm, I think I'm just leaning against the the largest tr tree trunk that's by the fire. Hanging out, trying to be as warm as you can. Yeah, just yep. hugging myself. <laughs> With your incredibly dirty cloak. Hey, it's clean. That's why it's it is it was cleaned. You've now walked a day in it, so it is a little dirty. Illicall has a bedroll though, for certain. Because Illicall is my that one. Alright, yeah, so you you snuggle up in the tree, best of your ability. Although you are claiming to take first watch, so after Illicall falls asleep. Mm -hmm. After the call falls asleep, you limber up, you curl up in your, your cloak the best you can, and slowly drift. Pilot, you are taking the first two watches, unbeknownst to the call. Okay, on your first watch, make a. What is your. Actually, I should say, what is your passive perception? Or you. Actually, it'll be active. Make a perception check, and then also, what is your passive perception? Uh, my passive wisdom is 12, uh, and I rolled a 7 for an active Okay, perception. so you cannot roll lower than your passive for guarding. Uh, actually, while we're while I'm asking, what is everyone's passive? I've got a 12 as well. Okay. I've got a 13. Nice. Alright, so pilot's passive is a 12, although they rolled a 7. Uh, during your first watch, uh, Pilot, you kind of drift a little bit, not in terms of like falling asleep, but in terms of looking around, uh, you start to, you're not as active, you are not. You did not roll as high as your passive perception, one would say, and you start to look at the stars, and you remember looking at the stars, and these stars are right, unlike Alphonse. You remember the way these stars move through the sky. You you know the names of them, or you you know names of them. Uh, perhaps that's not what people are calling them now, uh, or what you what people are calling them. They're not calling them the same. Maybe they're not calling them the same things as you are. But you see the smallest moon as she starts to pass across the sky. You know know the name by which you know her. You've seen her pass through the sky before, so these stars are right. And you, you kind of get upset. You get, like, into your own thought. And you hear a noise. And it's the snapping of twigs somewhere. I look at the direction. You look. Raccoon. Scurries okay. away. At your, at your glance, the, the small creature with the little bitty hands pauses and then darts back and back oh, away into, into the woods. Second watch begins making another perception. All right, this one's better. This one is 14. Okay, having your encounter with the small, thievious rodent, you are out and knocked out of your, you're not, you're, you're knocked out of this like daydream, night dream stance that you were having, and you are more actively aware. And you, you keep your eyes on the wood, you keep your eyes on the the fields nearby, you keep your eyes on the road. Uh, you see a deer uh, pass through uh, the field nearby. You see a bat capture a bug in the sky up above, and just the dimming light of the fire. You see bugs move uh, around, around the firelight, a few moths, and Everything seems fine. No, no intrusions. No noises. You hear an owl. A ways away, not not in a nearby tree, but maybe six hundred feet back into the woods. And you're you're aware that there is no trouble coming towards you. Nice. Your watch ends, and you're starting to see some purples up here on the horizon, you know that means that it is time for Illicall to take the final watch. Uh, just 
an hour, maybe two hours before sunrise. I slope my posture a little bit to look like I'm tired. Uh, in the in this time, you've also hidden some nuts and berries and some dried meat into Alphonse's pack as he also sleeps. Uh, you hunch and you, you go over to Illicol and you, you place your hand on them and give them a small nudge. Nudge, nudge. For my notes, is that like a full ration that I gain from that? Uh, no, it's a half ration. Okay. It is some nuts. It is it is a half a meal's worth of a rack. Cool. You could you could use it as bait for an animal. You could just have like a really good meal. <laughs> some road snacks. It's essentially trail mix with a little bit of like like a slim jim. Okay. It'll call. Uh, you. Yes. Sleep fairly peacefully. I literally almost just fell asleep at my desk. <laughs> yep. It was nice. Uh, and then you are nudge, nudged, nudge, nudged by the bony hand of Ronald. I I slowly wake up and get my bearings and everything. Morning. <laughs> Morning. Billy Call, you wake up. Uh, your eyes adjust to the early morning darkness. Uh, you do see on the eastern uh, horizon there is you know, the slight tinges of potentially sunrise in the distant future. Ronald goes and lays down. Ronald appears pretty tired. He's like hunched over a little bit. And he goes and lays down near nearby Alphonse and appears to still as if sleep uh, is taken. The, as far as you know, sleep has taken him. Uh, he does not snore. In fact, he sleeps very, very still. It is they? very impressive. You wish uh, some members of your tribe slept like that, because a couple of them saw a log while they sleep. <laughs> Specifically your sister. Big Snora. <laughs> Which one? All of them. All right. <laughs> All the sisters. Yeah, so your your watch begins. Make a... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Six. Okay. Uh, you in your early morning grogginess half fall back asleep still awake but you do the you nod off and you get the like head bob and you, you know I'm here I'm here I was listening the whole time I promise <laughs> yeah no I was just really enjoying the music although you're lackadaisical uh, you do hear the sounds of morning starting there like birds begin to awaken uh, and the sun starts to rise, you wake up more. As you see the peak of uh, the sun starting to come up over the horizon, you stoke the fire a little bit, you you stand up, you walk around, you, you kind of like give yourself like the like, come on muscles, wake up. You get the fire going a little bit more, you start a pot of hot water uh, for either coffee or tea or just a warm water in the morning, uh, and you begin making your breakfast at least. Hmm. And morning comes. Alphonse. The sun begins to rise. The birds begin to chirp. You wake up. It is bright. It is a nice morning. But uh, through throughout the night, clouds start to roll in during the third watch. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be a little overcast today. Pilot, you unshut down for the night. You you finish your resting protocol and it is morning. I make my way over to like the fire and just kind of like have my back towards Illicol and like so I'm facing pile, uh, Ronald and I just say when Illicol inquires just let him know that you took your breakfast during your second watch. Sorry, Alphonse? What? Nothing. I was just having a conversation with my friend over here. He was asking about how my breakfast went on second watch. <laughs> this is gonna get dicey. I just, I just nod. Like, okay, weird. Uh, of note, 
uh, pilot slash Ronald. You did, uh, during both of your watches, take care of all of your daily maintenance needs, et cetera, et cetera. Nice. Yeah, so you, you all have, have your breakfast. The sun is now full above the horizon. And you're all ready to move on about your day. You have traveled a day out of Melt. Uh, you're potentially, you know today, uh, Illicol, you know today, uh, you should meet the crossroad uh, where uh, the road to Melt meets the, they call it the Prince Road. Uh, mm -hmm. It is the, the main thoroughfare east to west through the, the middle of the reach, the reaches, I should say. Uh, so you begin heading south. And it's a little, it's a little bit of a dreary day. It's it's a little overcast. It like it threatens rain all day, but does not. Does not. As, like you go like, you you're seeing a little, a few signs of like snow melt, but uh, there is some like, a few snow drifts that have kind of endured, uh, the slightly warmer weather, uh, that have not completely melted. Uh, you pass by a cottage along the road. Uh, appears to be a hunter's cottage, uh, or maybe a woodsman's cottage. There's a stump outside with just an axe, kind of half buried in it, and a little bit of smoke coming out of the chimney. And you do not encounter any major trouble. Can I get uh, three perception checks from the group as you travel throughout the just to as you're looking around. 15. 15 from Illicol. I've got a 12. Five. 12 and? Dirty 20. A nice. dirty 20. Ooh. As you're all looking around, uh, Illicol, you notice a cardinal, like, uh, flying around, and you, you recognize that you recall a story your mother uh, told you about a, a trickster who would transform himself into a cardinal and uh, pester, like a, a trickster god who would transform himself into a cardinal and pester his siblings or spy on them and then use uh, their secrets uh, to get them into trouble. Alphonse, what was yours again? Twelve. Twelve. You notice a uh, really interesting growth of moss on a large rock. Very scientific. Mm -hmm. Very dry. <laughs> <laughs> not very not very interesting to anyone else. You you go to mention it and Illicol does not seem interested in hearing your story about moss. <laughs> I just noticed that like we're heading in the right direction based on the side of the, the rock that the moss is on. Yep. That's about it. <laughs> wow, uh, where do you go? And I was really excited to share that too, but shot down. <laughs> uh pilot. You notice, as you go, as you're passing through uh, a small wood, you notice a a pile of leaves that that stands out odd. Like it's it's too deliberate, if that makes sense. Like leaves fall in in a scattered pattern. But this pile of leaves is like a pile of leaves. Like, almost like if you raked leaves. Like, it is... There are too many leaves in one place, not enough leaves everywhere else. <laughs> is there a rock on the ground? Oh, yeah. You can you can find a, probably a, like, smaller than fist-sized rock. Why are there leaves in late winter? Uh, pine needles, then. Okay. Tree droppings. I grab the rock, and I throw it at the pile of leaves. Uh, you pick it up. Uh, make an attack roll. Throw an attack roll. With proficiency. That's close oh, enough. That's a 12. Good enough. Uh, you toss it. <laughs> oh, you throw it. Uh, into the, the pile of pine needles and other brush. You hear thunk. Like a hollow wooden sound. Not, not a sound that pine needles and other things would make. I stop immediately then with inhuman like speed no no momentum pilot stops as you guys are walking you, what you you do see you see pilot reach down pick up a rock chuck it in a pile of leaves you all hear the thunk and then pilot completely stops 
It takes me a good few steps to realize that they've stopped. I'm just kind of chuckling and like, nice shot, <laughs> but I don't Everyone realize. The pilot absolutely stopped. <laughs> Three steps on the road, Illicall, do you realize everyone else has stopped? I take their attention to the uh, leaf pot or pine needle pile. The the brush pile. Uh, you gesture at the at the uh, pile of brush. Alphonse, Illicall, you notice uh, also when pointed out. Yeah, kind of odd. Like the 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 surrounding area is pretty cleared of brush and leaves and pine needles and all winter bits, whatever. But that area is exceptionally dense. It's probably three foot, like a three foot circle, uh, three foot in diameter in a circle. I'm just, I'm just going to go over and start kicking through it. Mm. Okay. Uh, you go over, you start kicking the, the pile and conk, kick, toe hit something incredibly hard. Ow. Stu literally <laughs> stuck your toe. And there is a small chest uh, buried in this pile of leaves. It's like a, it's probably the size of like two loaves of bread, I guess. <laughs> it's like I, I will go over the other two. Like, hmm? is it locked? I guess I try it. There is a lock on it. It is indeed locked. Pick it up. And I... it's, it's pretty hefty. It's got a little bit of jingle jangle. Can I use thieves tools on it? Uh, I yeah. also have thieves tools. You both have thieves tools. Yeah, so I'm holding it. Oh, well, you could do it. I like How your do I, I've never used, <laughs> I've never used thieves up. tools. What do I do? I'm is proficient thief, in them. You are proficient in them, so it is a thieves tool check, which is dexterity based. Okay. And you have proficiency, so it is a it is your proficiency plus your dexterity modifier. It's a cool eleven. You, you're like I know. Just, and you, you take out your little thieves tool, roll, and you pull out a lock pick, and you. God, I got it. Tink. You were so sure you had it. You oh, felt the it. pins just right, and you you went to turn it, and you turned a little too hard, snapped your lockpick. <laughs> I, I I just wordlessly pass it over to pilot. I, just, I, I chuckle and kind of sit down on the ground and spike spark my pipe. I, assuming it's going to take a while. I've never seen an actual lit lock be picked before. It's a good in the show. Yep. I'll give it a try. All right. That's a 16. Nice. You, uh, first thing you do, you clear. You have like a, a kind of, it's like a, it's like a, it looks like a lock pick with uh, perhaps like a, some like pitch or something stuck to the end. And you, mm -hmm. you stick it on the lock and you, you remove the broken lock pick. And you oh, I hand that back it. over to Illicall. <laughs> <laughs> Half a lock pick to Illicall. Thanks. And you begin uh, with your, your two, you get the two. Tick. And the lock unlocks. You open it, and uh, inside you find uh, just a. It's. I mean, it's a. It's a small chest. It is not a. It's a treasure chest, but it's not like a treasure chest. You find a mix of copper, silver, and a few gold pieces. Uh, you take the time to count them. I'll just put them all in my as much as I could in my bag at the moment. Um, <laughs> Ronald. And I ha and I give the rest to Ronald. Or not Ronald to <laughs> <laughs> All the rest for Ronald. Yeah. I mean they I all kinda... take me back. They're, it is it's not a ton. Actually but how much was it? How much I would like to count? It is okay, it, it appears to be about You're about to get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> like sixty copper pieces, um a hundred silver pieces, and fifteen gold pieces. Oh wow. Hmm. Um I take all the gold pieces um to myself 
And then I hand the copper and silver to Ronald and or not. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> Payday for Ronald. For the Freudian slip. And then I split the silver and copper into equal sections and give it to Ilkal and Alphonse. How right, much you... silver was there again? I it already was, forgot. A uh, hundred silver and sixty copper. Okay, cool. So, what would have been ten gold worth of silver and six silver worth of copper? Yeah. Uh, so you see, so Ralph, 50 and you one. can open, open it up. Mm. And 50, 50, 50 and 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 yeah. 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 Yeah, so pink, 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 pink. And into Ronald's pocket go some coins. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And just a handful of coins for Illicol, handful of coins for Alphonse. Not a gold piece to be seen, though. <laughs> Not suspicious at all. I am lawful good. <laughs> <laughs> it shows. I'm not going to push uh, it. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you, you appear to find like this beaten up treasure chest hidden in the, in the woods along the way. Um, well spotted. Yep. What do you do with the chest? Do you, you keep it? Do you, are you carrying the, the one foot by nine inch chest? You can put I don't pack. take the chest, but can I keep the lock? Yes, you can. I keep the lock. Well, what do you do with the chest? <laughs> I look at Alphonse and I say, Kindle. You could. <laughs> it's probably not worth the effort. <laughs> okay, I just toss it to the side of the road away from <laughs> any other viewers. <laughs> Rolls into the trees. Compost. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're more than Just... welcome to pick it up, Phil. Call. <laughs> <laughs> it's organic. It's not littering. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you know all that all the work they put into waterproofing chests definitely makes it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the lacquer that's fine. Totally fine. Mm -hmm. Actually, okay. you know what? I pilot goes back to pick up the chest okay, and hides uh, it under the leaves again, or okay. hides it under the pine beetles again. One of the hinges is slightly off center now, so it like closes, but like <laughs> a little gap in the back, back in the pile of leaves. <laughs> Oh sure, that's kind Someone's of. Someone's gonna come looking for that. I know it. Yeah, we definitely like robbed someone of their life savings. Should have hit it better. Uh, you continue, continue on your walk. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that happened just before noon. You guys uh, stop for a lunch at some point. Eat a meal. Move on. Sun starts to go down. You. Uh, come across a small lake. It's more of a pond than a lake at one point. Uh, as the sun starts to set, uh, you do probably an hour before sunset reach the crossroads for the prince's ro the prince road, as they call it. When you know you need to, you see there's a staked in sign and to pointing to the right says Murray Crossroads. The left says Summer's Hearth. Pointing back at you says Melt. With a few distances marked. Some Hearth is farther away than Murray Crossroads. Melt, you've traveled, you know, 15, 20 miles. Right, I mean, keep going until it gets dark. Right turn. As you're going, about a half hour before sunset, you come across a felled tree across the road. Uh, you notice this probably a hundred feet away. So I immediately pull out my sword. Oldest trick in the book. <laughs> in the call, <laughs> unimpressed, <laughs> fucking <laughs> with with like all the disgust. Fucking amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> Draws a sword. Uh, you two here, Illicall, like upset. 
Like, <laughs> I can't believe this bullshit. Uh, not again. Draws the enormous greatsword from their back. Seeing this, I try to hide in the side of the bushes, if there are any, or like the side of trees next to the road. Okay. Uh, yeah, it is. You are in a wooded area. Uh, make a stealth check. I would also like to do a perception check. Yeah. Me too, actually. Double good plan. How about now we're thinking. Oh, I got a nat 20. 17. Nice. Very nice. I'm on top 17. of this shit. Pretty good. I have uh, 22 for stealth. Ooh. That'll <laughs> probably do it. <laughs> I'm gonna use some magic. <laughs> <laughs> Better roll well oh. on initiative. <laughs> the race. <laughs> yeah, as you uh, three are, since Illicall notes uh, small swear, natural 20, what did the other two of you get? 17. Da -da. A 22 for stealth. Did you do perception? I didn't do perception, no. Please do. Oh, okay. That is a... 13 for perception. You all notice them. They're not very good. I notice them um, a lot. You notice them. You notice them 100 feet out. <laughs> um, you notice them and draw your sword. Like, as you draw your sword, you're like, you, you, and you. Okay. <laughs> I guess this is the trouble we're going to encounter. Um, as it goes, tree down. Not, I mean, hidden? Sure. Like, they're not standing in the middle of the road, I guess. Uh, but you notice one uh, to your right uh, off the right of the road uh, standing up against a tree is is literally smoking a cigarette or some sort of <laughs> like smoke item pipe um, it is not a pipe uh, okay. it, is, it is a rolled rolled lit thing joint uh, potentially <laughs> you can see, you also get a whiff of it as the wind picks up um, that is actually what trips off the other two of you. You smell some sort of burning herb. Uh, could be mind-altering, could not be. Uh, and Illicol, you also notice two others on the other side of the road opposite. And they appear to be... One is actually just kind of like sitting uh, up against a tree, hidden, quote-unquote. And one is uh, leaned... Like, this is the one that's more actively aware that you guys are on the, on the way. It's trying to like... <laughs> like, that's the whistle. That is not a bird whistle. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna uh, straight up just go, good afternoon, gentlemen. The city one turns the corner, kind of gives you a, hey, how's it going? And, like, you can see them loosen a weapon in the scabbard, uh, and they draw a hand crossbow, and they point at you and say, I guess you know how this goes, huh? This is the part where you give us your money and we let you go on about the rest of your evening. I, I immediately enter a rage. <laughs> <laughs> How far away is this first one? Uh, this person is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 feet away. This okay. person is probably close to 50. This person is probably close to Should we roll initiative? Yes. Uh, if that is... If that is how, they've how you they've already out. drawn yeah, weapons there's on There's only us, one I way mean... this is going down. All right. Uh, this person standing... This person no. Is oh, no. Please tell me you got lower than a five. <laughs> I got a 17. Oh. Ill calls on 17. Mm -hmm. Alphonse is on a solid five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do I add anything to that number, or is that just... Yes. Top middle of your page. Once again. Yep, that's the in it. It's a six then. Oh, solid. Nice. Cool. I have sixteen. You got a sixteen. Pilot, <sighs> I'm so mad. <laughs> hey, look. Here's the deal. They can't kill all three. Exactly. There are only two we... of them right now. Mm, they can't kill all yeah. three of them. And the uh, terrible bandits. Higher than six. <laughs> the probability is pretty good. Oh, feels bad, man. Bandits are actually on 
seven. Well, you know, at least they're all out of range. They roll. They roll the. Roll the seven. Well, they guys. they probably have. Yep. I I have a longbow. I have stuff I can throw. All right. So Illy Call, you immediately in our rage. We in our initiative. You, uh, not having it. Um, so you said that first guy is 35 feet away, so I could get 35. within melee range, yeah. You can. So you move all the way up on him? Yep. Alright. And, yeah, I'll, I'm just going to make an attack with my greatsword. Go for it. That would be an 18. That hits. Yep. 13 damage. He dead. Uh, He's dead. Lethal he? or non? <laughs> lethal? <laughs> yep. It's a sword. It is. You can choose to deal non-lethal damage at any point in time. I'm not doing that. Yep, I was just making sure. <laughs> the hand with the crossbow yep. points at you as he's coming. You slice through and completely cleave off the arm holding the crossbow. The crossbow falls <laughs> to the ground and bury your uh, greatsword in their chest. <laughs> <laughs> And they, the light leaves their eyes, and they are, uh, as we like to call it in the business, uh, Paris. Baby's first murder. <laughs> there, there it went. R.I.P. Uh, Pilot, you're up. Um, I go towards the other side of the tree that Illicol is. Oh wait. Um, next to. You. Ronald yeah, so was I'm in the bushes. The yeah. They oh yeah, I was. You were, I was. We'll see you head over there. Yeah. Um. And how far away am I from the guy in front of me? 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 feet. Um. I use all my movement speed and dash or and move thirty five feet forward. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And. Uh, and. Sorry. You've you you have cutting action now, don't you? I do, and then I take the rest of it and go as, and I think it should get me to the person, right? That will get you to them. We'll and you. I this is the person laying down. They have not stood up yet. <laughs> and I take my rapier and stab them with advantage because they are a prom. Nice. Natural twenty. The... <laughs> oh boy. Oh man! Also, double the sneak attack damage. Double sneak attack. Yeah, oh, yeah. it is a crit. The sneak attack damage crits as well. Um, and I say roll double the dice is my preferred way. Yeah, for crit. So do two d sixes and one d eight. As the rapier, the d eight also crits. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so two d eight, two d six. Jesus Christ! That's enough. It's gonna be enough. That's twenty one. That's oh my enough. god. Uh the person who was just like laying has their like crossbow by their side has just like looked up, huh? <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Not this person, I mean they they look like a bad person. They're they're real like they got like a nasty scar across their face, but like <sighs> was just out of it. <laughs> was not <laughs> <laughs> heard heard the exchange da, 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 in rapier like in the gut and nice. they are no more nice <laughs> um smoking person steps out <laughs> is going to not charge either of you is going to draw their light crossbow is going to fire at you Illicall because you were the closest and Alrighty. scariest and you and currently have their sword your sword buried in their boss potentially takes aim the there's a 14 to hit just does just hits but I will take half damage, assuming Whoa. it's piercing. It is piercing. If I can find the right one, this one, this one. You take four damage, half to two. Nice. As a crossbow bolt sinks into your armor, through your shoulder armor, and into your shoulder. 
uh, very unhappy. Uh, seeing that that has not phased you hmm. whatsoever, I would say they didn't like step up. They they just turn within the five foot square. As that has not phased you at all, um, the peeker on the other side note that their other companion is no longer there. They attempt to run. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. They're running. Alphonse, you're right. You uh, see he's still within 120 about, feet, uh, right? Yes. Okay, uh, so I'm going to cast Magic Missile. Okay. Can you walk I me through this? Require... Okay, so Magic Missile does not, you do not require a roll. Magic okay. Missile hits. Uh, it so is just 4d4. Or, or is it 4d4? Uh, 3, 3, you're right. 3d4 plus 3 damage. Each one does a d4 plus 1. So you roll 3d4 and add 3. Uh, that's an three 11. Four. Yeah, yeah it is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Alphonse draws his wand for the first time. <laughs> Proving that the he light does spell. Plus, plus, indeed... plus the 4 attack bonus. In, oh, it was 11 plus the 4, so it was 15. Yep. Okay. So Roast him. Um, and through his spell focus of a wand, encants the mystic words to the spell magic missile. It makes a gesture with his Zoff hand, and pew, pew, pew. Three arcs of light fly out, and pew, pew, pew right in the back of the third individual trying to escape and they fall flat onto their face uh, also no more <laughs> good job gang Three, about a grand total of six seconds have passed and three murders have occurred <laughs> one threat and three murders I would uh, like to loot the body Yes, you would. Of yeah, course. I'll do the same. Across the three of them, you find. So are we, like, keeping everything on each respective kill, or are we splitting the that's, rewards? That's what I would say. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to get some magic mushrooms. There are three scimitars and three light crossbows. One Each of them has a scimitar and a light crossbow and ammunition. And across the three of them, you find an unusual currency. They appear to have robbed someone carrying electrum key. Oh. Oh. Ooh. And across the three of them, you find 13 electrum pieces. 13? How was that divided amongst them, though? Because that'll determine how, who um, gets what. Yeah. The it is. Or would that be? It would be just. It would be five, five, and four. Um, the guy who's running had the four. Of course. Hat. And yeah, and electro nice. pieces are five silver pieces each, so they're half a gold. So you find just uh, it is it is actually not uh, Northern Reach currency. You, oh. none of you have encountered uh, electrum pieces in your travels, uh, at least in this world. Uh, Alphonse, you may have encountered electrum pieces, but not here. Uh, Pilot, you've encountered electrum pieces, but most of the currency you're familiar with bears are different. not electrum pieces. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, you, you find three crossbows and three electrum pieces. It appears that they have uh, recently stashed all of their other uh, treasure somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Got them. Should if they had, if they had other treasure, but that is all they have on themselves currently. And nice. uh, it is about. Do you, do you do anything with the body? Do you leave the bodies? Do you? Do you um, I would like to try and move the log from the road. Mm, pretty big log. I'm still raging. You are still raging. Sure. Um. um... Come on. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 foot tree. Make a strength check. All right, I get advantage. Yep. It moves the bodies to the side of the road. 
or behind, or, or roughly like five, ten feet uh, outside of the road. Uh, twenty-one. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> It'll call you. You travel to, to the non-rooted side that's been been felled. You you have to end your lap, and you walk the the five foot wide tree or stump, whatever it is it is now, whatever, and you walk it standing straight up and you topple it over. You actually, you take it from all the way across the road and you've completely removed it from the road. Uh, in your, sort of just seeing red, just, it didn't have to be this way. It was just, they didn't have to, could have just let us go. They didn't have to do this. They could have, cho- they could have not chosen a life of crime. They could have just been foresters. They could have been mercenaries. And you, like, this is what you hear, the other two of you hear, it's just this, this enraged muttering of yeah. like, Illicall, it's more like Illicall is disappointed in the bandit. They could have been better bandit. They could have not used the same trick as all. Like, as, as the rage is settling, that, that is what the other two of you hear is Illicall just hoists this tree up and over the road and removes the, the block. Can I, um, so the, the guy that I got, he was smoking something. Uh, can I yes. pocket whatever that was? Yep, I imagine he has appears, a stash um, of it. He he has a a small pouch. Uh, it appears to be tobacco. Uh, it's a really stinky tobacco. Maybe it's it's like a mix of like uh, tobacco and uh, some other herb or root that is it's just real pungent. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's got a pouch of it, and um, along inside that pouch is a few uh, papers for rolling. But yeah, you also get a like four or five servings worth of tobacco and four or five rolling papers for it. Okay. You do not take the Alphonse. You do, Alphonse does not take the light crossbow or the scimitar. They are worth something. Uh, but like, use scimitar, use light crossbow. Not a ton. Something, though. Uh, he <laughs> leaves them with the body. Uh, Pilot, as you're moving that body to, to be with the others, you you notice that there is still a light crossbow and a scimitar. I take the light crossbow. Okay, you have two light crossbows, and if you take if you took the scimitar from the other, you also have the scimitar. I'll take the the third light crossbow from my guy. Okay, do you also take the scimitar? No. Okay, you just take the scimitar. So so do we leave the scimitars essentially across the board? Yeah, that's what I do. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. One or two light crossbows to each of you. Uh, bodies left with, and they're pretty dinged up scimitars. They're not like nice scimitars. They're, uh, <clears throat> they call you note. They they don't even have like sheaths. They're they're more like a loop on their their belt. Uh, so blade would be exposed. They're beat up scimitar. Like they don't probably <laughs> stolen. Also, <laughs> not good bandits. I guess we uh, we make camp. Not here. <laughs> okay. yeah, you, you you're your three new friends who are dead. We could just burn oh. the bodies as kindle. Oh my god. No. Can I move south to align them a little bit towards evil? A little bit towards chaos. Okay. All right, um, yeah, I guess no. we keep walking for a bit then. Yeah, you got you got about half an hour left of daylight, maybe forty five minutes. Uh, you can do down the road and make another couple miles two two and a half uh make uh whoever wishes to one all three if you should choose uh can make survival checks trying to find somewhere to camp tonight twenty one very nice uh I've got a nine not nice <laughs> I'm not gonna you know, I'm not gonna roll. Not something you worry about. Great, awesome. Um, Alphonse, you, you're walking down the road, man. Camp's camp. Uh, <laughs> There's a call. reason why you... I'm traveling with some some well traveled people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whenever we stop is when we stop. You 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 don't even understand. You're like, we could probably I could I could drop light on my staff and we could go another like two or three hours before the next camp. <laughs> it's my Alphonse voice. 
<laughs> uh, Ilikal, you take note uh, just as the sun is starting to top the trees, uh, setting topping the trees, uh, you note that uh, there's an overly large pine tree uh, just to, to the south side of the road, which is on your left. Uh, and you know through your travels uh, that these the overly large pine trees, such as this one, potentially what happens is uh, the branches spread out and they're evergreens, but the because they spread their branches out so much, uh, in towards the trunk is often like a great place to make camp. Uh, people often call these types of pines wayward pine. So what happens is the the inside branches of the trees can easily be cleared or brushed away. Uh, and just the tips of the branches have needles, so that way it's almost it's almost like camping under a tree tent. Uh, and there's generally enough space under a large enough wayward pine for well, four, maybe even five people to camp comfortably. Uh, and it keeps you out of the weather. It keeps warmth. You can often you can even make a small fire underneath the the boughs of a wayward pine because it is all green wood. It doesn't catch often. Uh, so you can have a small fire, it keeps in the warmth, and generally, uh, one, you're hard to see uh, from trouble from the outside, uh, but it keeps the weather off, and it's, it's often fairly comfortable. I relay all of that to the other two. Do you have all the other two of you have that relayed? <laughs> Alphonse acknowledges and says it's a good idea. <laughs> all right, yeah, I you, nod. <laughs> nodded. As you approach, you, you note this uh, large tree, uh, Ilikal lifts up a bow, and what you two notice is that you can crawl underneath, and inside is it's like a, it's like a, it's almost like a teepee. Uh, it is the the branches underneath uh, they're long, uh, but they're very few close to the ground, and the ones higher up don't have greenery until they reach kind of the edge of the tree. Uh, and it looks as if someone else had camped here within the past week, maybe two. Uh, there's some there are some signs of like comfort made. Uh, in an old, not a fire pit, but a, a small dugout area of fire. So you make camp, set watch. I can take the first watch. Works for me. I'll start the fire. Take the watches after you, Ella call, or yeah. Okay. Uh, you begin. You go again through your nightly routine as we discussed it moments mm, ago. Eat my dinner. Eat your dinner. Explore the area. You stretch. You take off uh, armor. Uh, you take off your shoes. Rub your sore feet. You've been on. You've been walking for two days now. I don't know. You dip into that flask that you had hidden away that we hadn't talked about yet. <laughs> and you start to uh, settle in for the night. Illicol says first watch for them. Illicol, make a uh, perception. 18. Very good. Um, you... Note that sitting in the tree, you can you can hear all around uh, throughout your watch. At one point, you decide to, to leave the tree, take a walk, use the bathroom, kind of enjoy the night air. Uh, as you settle back in at the end of your watch, it begins to rain. And it's a slight drizzle. Uh, just enough where you're like, yeah, I'm going to sleep for real. Ronald wakes up. Mm -hmm. Without you having to like shake. Like Ron it seems like Ronald's internal clock is, is very good. Uh, and Ronald like kind of stirs, nods at you. You wish to exchange words, you may. And I just immediately go to sleep, start yeah. snoring. What's up, Ronald? Passing it off. Ronald, uh, if you're covering Alphonse's watch again, first perception roll for your first watch. Uh, the first one is a six. Okay, much. Uh, your passive perception is much higher. Mm -hmm. You you note uh, the rain. Good job. No noises of animals. <laughs> no nothing really. No trouble. Second watch. Second watch is eighteen. 
Okay. Ooh, very good. Um, as the second watch, as uh, dawn approaches, you uh, take note that the rain stops and appears the clouds clear, and you see the sun start to rise. And you just out of like kind of like boredom, you don't you don't need to stretch. You don't you don't need to do anything. Like you can sit stone still and be fine and ready to move. Uh, but just kind of out of like mental boredom, uh, you decide to get up and, and go for a small walk. And as you, you step out of the tree, uh, you see the sunrise on the eastern horizon. Uh, and you note just in the wee hours of the morning a streak across the sky of a shooting star one or even like a lar- like a, a meteor like not just a shooting star like a big one just passes south to north across the sky and disappears right across the horizon it'll call roll a d20 okay Alphonse roll a d20 uh 12 4 You'll call, uh, you start to stir before Alphonse. But Alphonse was supposed to have the third watch. Uh, as, uh, as you do, uh, you note Ronald come back in to the pine, uh, starts to soak the fire, preparing for breakfast, it appears. Is it pretty much like morning, dawn? It is. It is morning, yes. It is time to be awake. But you do note that you are awake, Ronald is awake, Alphonse is not awake. But Alphonse I'm, was supposed to have third watch. I'm I'm gonna get up and go wake up Alphonse. Nudge him. Um, I, I kind of stir. So um, I, I look over at Ronald and I say, thank you so much for, for covering my, my watch. Alphonse, I, I really needed that you're responsible of you. He offered. I guess Ronald has been pulling more than their weight. I put a hand on Elkal's shoulder and I say, it was his first time fighting in a while. He needed his rest. You'd better do better, Alphonse. We are here to help you and accompany you, but that does not mean you can get off easy. I will try. All right, I'll go eat my breakfast. Eat your breakfast, ready on for the day. You can continue your walk. Um, Your trudge, if you will, to trudge. So that is two days of travel. You have approximately 13 more, but we're not going to go through every single day. Uh, you're along the Prince Road now, so you have uh, just under two weeks of travel to Furry Crossroads. Let's do, let's get a general survival check for uh, avoiding natural dangers from someone over the next week and um, majority of two weeks. Not great. And all three of you can roll if you wish, or you someone can assist, uh, whoever wishes. Or uh... one can assist in... One one can roll with advantage, and one can just roll separately, and someone else can assist. It's thirteen I, days to travel. Mine. I could assist with ill call. Okay. That would be great. I would okay. love advantage. I didn't roll well. Slightly better, twelve. Not bad. Uh, you don't encounter any danger, uh, but on the third day out, you do note signs of an owlbear. Uh, you know some owlbear feathers. Uh, they appear to be not recent as in within the past day, but uh, an owlbear has passed this way where you are. You get It puts you on alert for that type of activity. As you continue to travel uh, towards the end of the trip, you also start noting things uh, you, you you note more travelers. Uh, no one appears to be sus- like a suspicious. You see a traveling caravan of traders. Um, just they're bringing goods potentially from Red Cross Roads, potentially to melt. Um, on the fifth day, you pass through a small town with of like six cottages. No no industry. It, it appears to be 
uh, Forester's Town. Uh, they they take care of the local forest. They do they collect lumber. They probably sell to the traders and uh, passerby. Um, one of the cottages has some leathers that appear to be like tanning. Can we get a so that as far as natural dangers go, you're fine. Uh, as far and that includes monsters. As far as social or banditry go, uh, can I get a three or advantage and plus one uh, perception check? Nat 20. Very nice. I got perception 17. 17. Uh, Alfonso, do I have to roll? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> He's just vibing. He's vibing. Um, yeah, as, as far as social and human issues, uh, Ilkal is on <laughs> point. Um, Ilkal, you, you note every passerby, you, you read their faces, you see a few, uh, like at one point there appear to be some pilgrims, like uh, led by potentially a cleric, someone who's taken like a vow of poverty, they've got like the, the brown robes tied with a rope, and they're talking about the the divinity of the road and feeling the dirt with your own feet and uh, like four that are following him are just like yeah <laughs> like they, <laughs> they look tired and like they, they they bit off more than they can chew um, a, a more a tinker goes by like uh, in cart pulled by a donkey um, you know tinkers they, they do a little bit of everything they are the jacks of all trades they can repair a shoe they can mend a saw blade uh often they have just random goods to sell and they often trade uh they're really big on exchange like a thing for a thing uh and you can often notice a tinker uh just by their erratic nature uh and on uh two days out from road crossing you actually pass a group of wood elves uh and they appear they, they don't don't appear to be like like up to anything but they're all armed as if rangers uh, as rangers would be and they just appear to be heading east uh, other than that you guys make it to uh, the very crossroads unassaulted past the first one uh, and uh, you arrive at the very crossroads as you approach uh, as you leave um, a clearing you note the city ahead it is uh, probably another mile off but to your right, to the north, you notice this enormous lake, and it is uh, sparkling in the sunlight. It is, I mean, it's enormous like a large lake. It's not enormous like Lake Superior, uh, <laughs> a, a normal large lake. Uh, not a great lake, a large lake. Uh, you notice uh, across the lake, there are a few what appear to be like fishing outposts. There are a few... Uh, cottages, huts, docks uh, on the far side of the lake in in different places. You see a few fishing boats out on the lake. Nothing with sails. Uh, all appear to be rowboat of some sort. Or if they do have a sail, it's, it's going to be very small and it's taken in right now. And uh, you start to pass some like fishermen's huts and things along the way. Uh, as you approach the town, you note that this is a much larger town. Than There's a wall that runs the perimeter of the town. And you see guard towers at each entrance from which you can see. You can see the, the east entrance is what you're approaching. There are two guard towers. You can also kind of see guard towers at the south and potentially at the north. You can't see across the town. And there are a couple tall, tall buildings that you can see over the town's wall. Uh, you see thatched roofs. And uh, it is late midday as you're approaching. It's not near sunset, uh, but on the 15th-ish, 14th-ish, 15th-ish day, around two weeks, uh, you were approaching, and you're all very tired of being on the road. So the conversation has been kind of dry for two weeks. You guys have talked about everything, but nothing, really. You, you all arrive, um, and you see the splendor, to some extent, that is the road crossroads. It'll call you Vineyard, so... Alphonse, this is the largest city you have seen so far. It is a moderately large city. 
It is a it is a city, not a town. Uh, there is industry here. There is there are multiple races. Uh, there is a large lake. There is trade. There is as you approach, you note other travelers waiting in line that are getting inspected by uh, the city guard and ask like what they're traveling. Uh, but this is your first glimpse of the Ray Crossroads. <laughs>